So I ran into kind of an interesting performance problem related to GraphQL. So I wanted to share how I spotted this problem, debugged it, and then eventually fixed it. So one thing that I noticed in my server was I was consistently getting slow requests for a particular query. Now I was able to spot this because I'm using Datadog and I'm tracing all my requests. So this is one of the requests that was quite slow. You can see it took 496 milliseconds to complete. Now this might not seem like a ton of time, uh, but for an API response, this can be incredibly slow. Now the request that's going slow is actually a search result. So sometimes this can be okay. Sometimes it takes extra time to search a large base of documents or whatever. But in my case, what I noticed when I was looking at the trace is my request to the database to actually find the recipes, in this case recipes is what I'm searching for, was very fast. It took 19.3 milliseconds and before this I made a request to get the user that took 6 milliseconds. So you can see I did two Postgres queries and they were quite fast uh, compared to everything else. So here I can see the breakdown of where the rest of the time went for the 496 milliseconds. And it turns out most of it was related to GraphQL resolving fields. And I can go down this, or I think I have to go like this. And it all has to do with resolving GraphQL fields. And so I found this quite interesting because I thought my main bottleneck in general would be Postgres and not GraphQL. And this is something that was pretty consistent. If I look at my other traces, uh, this is what they look like. So now some search results went, came, like, came back pretty quickly um, because with the search, it depends how many items came back. So that was one thing I noticed as well. If I was fetching a lot of items, it would be slower. If I only fetched a few items, it was faster. Um, but in general, the traces look like this, where the purple took most of the time. The purple is GraphQL doing its thing. The blue is Postgres. So my database was being a lot faster than anything GraphQL was doing. So that was quite odd. And you can see quite a few requests are like that. Um, where they are taking a bit of time in the GraphQL portion. Now to give you just a little bit of context of what is actually looking like in the UI, this is the place in the website where it's occurring. So a user can search something like chicken, and you can see it takes a second, and then it shows up, and we can click on the results, and then we can just search for our recipes. So based on how my trace looked, and it was spending a lot of time resolving these child fields, I figured there might be something wrong with one of my resolvers. So I looked into them and it turns out I only have three custom resolvers uh, underneath here. And two of them I thought could be causing the problem because there I am using ImageX for my images. And one of the things that I do is I have to sign the URL so no one tampers with the images. And to do that, they are computing a hash, an MD5 hash in this case, or I guess a signature. So in this case, I'm usually fetching around 20 recipes. And so I have two fields that are signing things. So that is 40 total signatures or MD5 functions that are being run. So I figured that could be the cause, but I tested this locally and it just ran too fast. Uh, it just wasn't gonna be causing that much significant a delay because 400 milliseconds plus is a lot of time and this was running in under zero milliseconds every single time so this was not really the cause and none of my other child resolvers there's only one other custom resolver that I had for a child and it wasn't doing anything special to cause this the next thing that I tried was another tracing tool called Apollo tracing and I use this with the Apollo platform to get a UI that looked like this now it turned out this didn't really give me too much more information besides what Datadog gave me. It looked very similar. They have a little bit more of detail. Uh, all I kind of got from this is all my fields look like they take a while to resolve, at least the child ones do, uh, as you can see here. Now this was kind of weird to me because like stuff like description and ID and stuff here, I don't have like my own resolver there. That's just whatever the default one GraphQL has. But I did notice from this, I do have a little bit of nesting going on. So I have recipes, and then I also have ingredients, and ingredients have fields. So we're going to come back to this. But one thing that I remember seeing in a GitHub issue a while ago, and that came up here again, uh, was this one about GraphQL performance. And this is basically the TLDR of it. Uh, and that GraphQL has some overhead, and that reducing the overhead is non-trivial, and removing it completely may not be an option. Ultimately, GraphQL.js is still responsible for making API boundary guarantees 
about the shape and type of the return data, and by design does not trust the underlying systems. In other words, GraphQL does runtime type checking and sub-selection, and that has some cost. So basically, I thought this might have been kind of some of my problem. Anyway, is GraphQL has some overhead, and so it's going to be spending some time type checking and sub-selectioning, and I thought that could have been the source. And I didn't think my data was too big, uh, but I looked at my data, and I did this by just coming back to my site, and I inspected it, and I went to the network tab, and I just uh, filtered for GraphQL requests, and then I just did my query here. And so here you can see this is the GraphQL query that gets run, and you can see it's 101 kilobytes. So this particular search result is, can be a little bit large. Like that's that's a pretty good amount of data. Now it's not giant by any means, so I was still surprised by the response time I was getting. Uh, but I kind of figured it might have been down to this. I'm fetching upwards of 20 recipes, and then each recipe can have maybe upwards of 20 ingredients, and then that ingredient can have four fields in it. So I could be resolving upwards of 1,600 fields just from that. And so I figured maybe GraphQL's overhead of type checking and sub-selecting on this many fields was just bogging me down. I had a hard time believing it was just GraphQL overhead that was causing my problem. It was my best lead so far, but it felt really weird for the amount of data I was pushing through and the time it was taking. It just didn't line up. My data just wasn't big enough for that amount of overhead. So I figured it must be something wrong with my code and something that I'm doing. So I figured the best way to audit that is to do some profiling. So to profile it, this is what I did. So I ran over here node dash dash inspect on my application and I'm using TypeScript. So this is in the dist folder. This is the built code or compiled code. And then after that, I ran this program called auto cannon, which basically just sends a crap ton of requests to my server. Now I'm not going to run it here because I don't know it may crap my computer, uh, but basically what I did is I put the GraphQL request in a JSON file here, and then I sent all my requests to this over here. Now before I actually ran AutoCannon, I actually turned on the profiler. So what happens when you use the inspect flag with Node over there is you can use Chrome Dev Tools and the profiler that comes along with that. So when you start up your server, what you can do is you can go over to About Inspect. And you can actually see your node instance running and inspect it with Chrome DevTools. So that's what I have up here. And this is already a profile that I ran uh, while auto canning it. So this is me spamming it with a ton of requests. And this is us looking at a single request right here. Now, what's good to note about this is I ran this locally. So this is a different time profile. So for example, the entire request took 22.5 milliseconds. I also stripped out everything but the GraphQL part. So I got rid of my Postgres SQL query and I am just basically hard coding the data. So this is how much time it's taking on my Mac, which is pretty fast uh, to just pump or flow the data through GraphQL and resolve the fields and the child fields and all that fun stuff. Now, the first thing that I saw when I looked at this flame chart uh, was this garbage collector down here. So this was my biggest takeaway from looking at this. And I saw it took 4.4 milliseconds, which was a decent chunk of time. Um, but other than that, I didn't have any ideas of how to debug it from here because I'm sending a ton of requests at this. And the garbage collector took some time, but it didn't take the majority of time. It looks like I kind of just had death by a thousand cuts here. Um, what it looked like to me is we just have a bunch of small requests that are happening, right? And so I just figured that from this, um, it must be the validation and subselecting that GraphQL is doing on all the different objects that is causing this. And I'm really not that experienced at debugging from flame graphs. So that was kind of the conclusion I came to looking this at first. And at this point, I'm kind of just stuck. So what I did next was go to Twitter. Now, after I tweeted this, there was a lot of different ideas people had. So here were the ones that looked the most promising. The first thing that I tried that someone suggested was to switch out the promises that I was using to something like Bluebird. And I did that and I profiled it again. And funny enough, Bluebird absolutely destroyed the performance. It actually made it like five times slower. It was taking like 100 milliseconds on my computer to finish the request, even though we weren't really doing anything at all. And this is what the flame graph of it looked like. You'll notice it just garbage collected a lot more. 
So that was something I saw. And then there just seems to be like more cuts in it. And just overall, there's just a lot more stuff going on. And the flame graph looks very different compared to our first one over here. The only difference between these two is me turning on Bluebird. So I was kind of surprised by the very big difference between those two. So Bluebird did not work for me. GraphQL JIT was another one multiple people recommended to me. This is something where it's an alternate implementation of GraphQL runtime. So instead of using GraphQL JS, I would use this to run my request. I haven't actually tried this out yet, so I can't say if it's any good, but this is on my list. It looks like it has a lot of potential. Cutting back on the amount of data I'm actually sending to a client was another suggestion. I'm sending 101 kilobytes, which is definitely overkill since I'm just showing search results with an image and some text. I'm kind of actually fetching the entire recipe. So I'm overfetching fields to actually for this display. Instead of what I should be doing is I should just be fetching the data for the thumbnail. And then when you click on it, load the whole recipe. So that's something I can definitely optimize and it will cut back on just the amount of data that is flowing through GraphQL. And the suggestion that helped me the most was from Tim. So thank you, Tim. And he suggested I take a look at this type GraphQL issue because I am using type GraphQL to curate my schema. And it turns out there is a bit of a performance problem in type GraphQL. Now there is a solution that I tried, which is just to upgrade to a beta version of type GraphQL. And then I just ran the profiler again and got much better results. So it took nine milliseconds for this particular request. And we can see the flame graph of what's going on. Now in retrospect, this seems kind of obvious. I'm using a different GraphQL schema or way, a different way of creating that schema. So that should have like hit me like the first thing of what could be causing my problem. Uh, but I guess because I was so close to the problem, it just never crossed my mind that type GraphQL could have been the issue. But I'm glad I was able to at least find that was part of the problem. There may still be more problems in type GraphQL or just in general. So if anyone has any tips debugging it from here, let me know. I'm open to it. Um, but one thing I was wondering is if I could figure this out from the flame chart, right? Because I have this flame chart here before I upgrade to type GraphQL. And I was just going through it, and it does look like it points to a lot of type GraphQL files. Like if I just hover over this, all this purple stuff here is type GraphQL. So there's a lot of type GraphQL stuff going on. And so maybe I should have saw this and saw the files where it's coming from and connect it there. Now, one thing I noticed is in the supply millwares function, that seems to consistently trigger the garbage collection right here. Um, and here. So there may be something wrong there. Um, so I'll have to dig more into the type GraphQL angle, but at least for now, this seems to be one of my big problems. So upgrading helped. I haven't pushed this change to production yet. I'm going to try that next and we'll see if this helps in prod, but at least locally, this seems to be the fix.